In this video, we're going to show you how to use your Receipt Now Elite printer, including connecting it to your PC or a network for the first time, and setting up your receipts with logos and watermarks. The Receipt Now is designed to stack underneath your scanner to save space, but you can use it separately if you need to. Now the first thing you need to do is figure out whether you have a USB only Receipt Now or a network ready model, which you can tell pretty easily depending on whether it has Ethernet ports on the back. Now a network model can be connected either way, USB or Ethernet, so that's what we're showing here. USB mode is pretty simple, there's only one way to connect it. Plug in the power cable, plug in the USB cable, connect the other end to your computer, turn it on and we're ready to move on to the next step. If you want to use the printer in network mode you have a couple of options. As you can see this unit has two Ethernet ports on the back and that's there so that you can chain in a second network device such as a scanner if you want. Now these ports are interchangeable, it doesn't matter which one you connect to the network and which one you connect to the scanner. You don't even have to use both of them if you don't want to, you can just use one and connect the printer straight to the network if you want. If you want to use the printer over its own network connection, it's pretty simple, just plug an ethernet cable into the line in, plug the other end into the network which is usually going to be a router or some kind of network switch, and that's it. Power it on and you move on to the next step. If you do want to chain in another network device, there's only one extra step. First plug in the line out and connect the other end to your scanner, then connect the line in and plug that into your network. And the next thing we want to do is install the drivers, which you can find either on the CD that came in the box with your printer, or online at www.digitalcheck.com support. Open the folder, click the file named setup.exe, It'll open the setup program where you accept the terms and select which model of printer you have, the Receipt Now Elite or the original Receipt Now. The setup process for the original Receipt Now actually works exactly the same as the process for the Receipt Now Elite. The only difference is that you'll see a slightly different name in your device list, SRN2PTR instead of SRN Elite. Once you've selected the correct model, we probably don't want to make it our default printer, uh, click Next and you'll be asked if you want Typical or Advanced Setup. We're going to go with typical. Advanced is really only for IT people and systems administrators who, who want a few specific things. Now here's the important part where it says set printer port. You can select USB or network. It's set to USB by default. So if you are setting up in USB mode, just click install and you'll move forward with the process. If you want to set it up in network mode, you have to go to the drop down, select net, and then you'll be asked to enter the printer's IP address at the bottom. There are a couple of ways that you can find your printer's IP address on the network. If you open your router settings and go to the list of connected devices, you should be able to find your SmartSource Receipt Now Elite printer with the name SRN Elite, or you can look by MAC number, which is printed on the sticker on the bottom of the printer, and hopefully you'll find the IP address right there. Or you can print out a test page that contains the printer's network information. To do that, start with the printer powered off, hold down the feed button on the front, then turn the power switch on on the back. After a few seconds, a short stub will print out and you can let go of the button. In about 15 more seconds, a full test page will print out, which includes the printer's IP address and status information. You enter the printer's IP address and the program will install the setup files. And in a minute you will see a new printer in your list of printers and scanners called SRN Elite. It'll be followed either by an E if it's in Ethernet mode or U if it's USB. So now that we've got the printer installed and connected, we want to set up the format of the receipts themselves. And we can actually do that right here from within the Windows printer properties. Now all the transaction information that's going to make up the body of the receipt, that comes from the teller program separately. So what we're doing here is mostly setting up watermarks and things like logos that go in the header and footer. To get there in Windows 11, just click on the name of the printer and select printer properties from the menu. To get that same menu in Windows 10, you right click on the printer in the device manager. Once we have the printer properties open, we go over to the tab that says download, and this is where we'll import our logo files. There's a frame at the top here that says file download, and we actually want to skip that. Uh, it's not where you import logos, it's for things like fonts and firmware. So we skip that and go down to the middle row of buttons where it says add, and that's where we import our logos. When you click on the add button, a dialog box pops up and you navigate to where you're keeping your logo files. A couple of things about the logo files. First of all, they have to be black and white only, which is typically going to be a one-bit bitonal bitmap. 
You can't have color or grayscale information because a thermal printer only prints solid black or solid white. So make sure logo files are black and white only. Second is that you can only upload one logo file at a time. So if you have two different logos, for example, one for the header and one for the footer, you have to go and hit the add button again and repeat the process. As we upload the logo files, they'll appear in this list on the left hand side. And we want to click on each one and make sure that the radio buttons under preview are set to transformation. That's what actually transforms the logo into the format that the printer will use. Now you may want to pause here for a second, especially if you uploaded more than one logo and write down the order that they show up in that list. Uh, if you navigate away from this tab and then come back later, the list will be blank, even though the logos are still in there. It's, it's just a quirk of the way Windows printer properties works. So write down the order here in case you need to remember it later. Once we have all the logos we need, we click download all and that will save them to the printer's memory. Then we click OK and go to Printer Preferences and we want the Operations tab from there. And under Operation you have options for the beginning and the end of the document or the beginning and the end of the page. We're going to use Document. You might use the beginning and the end of the page if you have, for example, a two-part receipt. And under Start of Document we go down to the drop-down that says Print Logo and we pick which logo we want it to print at the top. This is where it's important to remember which was Logo 1, Logo 2, and so on. We've also got options for the logo to be aligned at the left, center, or the right, and we almost always want it to be before the cut. So you click OK to save it, and you can either leave it like that, or if you want another logo at the bottom, you can go to End of Document. We can go to the same drop-down, and we're going to select logo number two. And here you can also select how the machine is going to cut your receipt at the end. A full cut is just what it says. It cuts the paper all the way through. If you pick partial cut, it'll leave about a millimeter worth of paper to tear off so that the receipt doesn't print out and then fall off at the end. Anyway, once we've selected our second logo, we hit OK to save it, and we can go back to Printer Properties and print a test page from there. If we did it right, we'll see our receipt print out with our logo 1 at the top and logo 2 at the bottom. If you look closely, you'll see that logo 2 is centered like we selected and logo 1 at the top is left aligned, which is the default. The other thing you can do from printer preferences is to use a watermark and you can use either an image or text for your watermark. If you use an image, it has to be black and white just like the logos. You click Browse and you can upload a file from your computer just like the logos. In fact, that's what we'll use here for an example. Once we've got our image file uploaded, you can go down and adjust the size and you can adjust the brightness. And you can also choose where you want it to appear on the page. There's several different locations if you want to have it appear once. Or if you want it to repeat, you can select Tiled and we see it here. If we're using it as a watermark, you probably want it to be pretty light, so we'll do that. Once we've got it set up the way we like, we can click Apply to save it, click OK to exit, and then we'll go print a test page, and we see it come out pretty much like we expected. If you want to use a text watermark, you go back and select that option from the menu, and you see under the drop-down we have several preset phrases that you can choose from, and we'll see it change on the right as we do that. Or, you can enter your own text if you want, you can type in whatever you want. So we'll do that and we see it appear in the preview to the right also. You've got some options here for font and size. You can actually upload your own font from that same place where we uploaded the logos the first time. That's what the top half of that window was for. You can use the angle slider to rotate the text around and we see it doing that here. Down at the bottom you have those same two sliders. Size is for images, so we won't use that, but you can adjust the brightness, and we'll change it a little bit here. Then you click Apply to save it, OK to exit, and we'll print another test page. And that one also came out looking pretty good. Logo 1 at the top, logo 2 at the bottom, and the watermark throughout the rest of the document. You can use a logo and a watermark at the same time, uh, so we see that here. And that's how you do it for basic setup of logos, watermarks, and text on your Receipt Now printer. We hope you found this tutorial helpful, and we'll see you again next time.